this video is to give closure on the situation that occurred when someone on my YouTube channel by the name of quote Harry Nutsack end quote began posting some spam comments on my YouTube videos. And what I mean by spam comments is that he would copy and paste the same comment saying the same thing on a lot of my YouTube videos. He then contacted me via email. And as you see here, here's our email correspondence. Now pull up the first one. And as you can see, now I see a name, Ethan Cole. Now I don't know if that is his real name or correct name or what it is. Anyways, he says, Hi, for the Jason Matthew of the glass, can you explain why every time a believer in quantum grammar is asked to provide evidence of any of these claims they make or have been made by, made my Miller or Gould, they respond with anger, claiming non inner standing and refusing to communicate further. So he's asking me to explain about believers in quantum grammar, whatever that means. Every time I have a convo with one of you, no offense. You guys go ape shit and sideways and run away. Are you willing to have a rational discussion with someone? Question. Is there factual evidence Gould and Miller's documents have been accepted by the UN and the UPU? Not sure what that means. There is no paper trail and every time I ask, no offense. Again, he says no offense, but your people, my people, he's saying my people, who are my people? They're all bent out of shape and run away. Will you speak on this or have a convo with me in private? I don't mean you repeating everything on Miller's tapes. I mean a real discussion, a two-way conversation. And then I replied, hello, I assume your name is Ethan Cole. You have not identified yourself, but your email address is Ethan Cole, safe me on that. Forgive me if my assumption is not correct. I am a language tutor. I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar via confidential one-on-one -on -one workshops. I am happy to schedule you a brief 10 to 15 minute confidential video consultation if you are interested and motivated to learn the language. Would you like me to schedule a consultation? Thank you for your email. And then he replies, Hi, Jason. I appreciate the reply to my email. I'm very interested in quantum grammar, but I wish to see some evidence of some of the claims that have been made. I guess the simplest form of evidence would be when Gould registered the USA flag as his own with the Navy, UN, UPU, etc. Since the flag was taken in 1999 under maritime law, there has to be some type of registration and acceptance by these alphabet agencies. Would you be willing to supply or show me a path to find these evidentiary documents? Question. So my reply to that is, hello, Ethan. Your line of questioning lies outside my claim of language tutor and involves the claims of someone else. However, I am willing to discuss it via video communication. I am aware of the comments you leave on my YouTube videos, and I think I understand the position they originate from. For me, the most efficient conduit to discuss these matters is via face-to-face -face video chat with honor, respect, and grace. If you would like to have a brief confidential video chat about the language, my offer stands. Would you like me to schedule a confidential video consultation for you? Keep in mind, this is the second time I've offered him a video consultation. Thank you for your email. Okay, so then he replies, Hi, Jason. Thank you for replying back again and answering my questions. As I said before, I don't doubt the language. I comprehend enough to know that part, if true. 
The only thing that I am questioning is the claims being made. The only thing he's questioning is the claims being made. Which claims would be those be? I admit, you have not made these claims. So he knows I didn't make these claims. They were made by Miller and Gould. However, the folks learning quantum are believing all this without any evidence. Now he's making assumptions for the folks learning quantum. How does he know? I know a guy who claims he is contracting with Gould and how the first week he told me he has five more years to become a federal postal judge, takes 15, as he already has 10 years into it. He claims to have fired judges and just last week. His new claim is he is the chief justice of the California circuit courts. Yet at the same time, claims fiction and nonfiction cannot mix. If the two do not mix, to which I fully agree, then how can Gould or Miller take the flag? Is the whole world supposed to telepathically know? You get where I'm going with this. They claim they took the flag. If so, there must be international record of them doing so. Again, I'm not sure where he's going with this. He's, he's asking me questions that don't, that I'm not involved. I'm not involved with what's going on and what he's asking. So I'm a language tutor. I teach the language. I appreciate your offer. And if you wish to Skype face to face, send me your Skype. I will add you and contact you. However, my questions are going to be the same. So he says he's okay with face-to-face -face on Skype, i.e. video chat. Every person involved in quantum claims they resolved all their court issues and how they never have issues anymore. When cops pull them over and run their names, the cops shake. They get so scared. I don't know where he's getting these claims. He's claiming that. Well, actually, he's claiming that other people are making these claims. So all of this is like second and third and fourth hand claims. That's the BS I hear from all of them, except you, accept you. I assume he means E-C-C -C instead of A-C-C. -C. Although I have had no conversations with you yet, do you make any of these claims? Do I make any of these claims? Well, watch my videos. Do I? And further, you must believe taking the flag is real. So now he's making claims on my behalf that I must do this or that. After all, you wear the badge showing his flag. I assume he's referring to my CPAS C treaty. But who is he? Who's his? He doesn't give him closure on who his is. So have you seen evidence of the flag being taken under maritime law? Lastly, you make a damn good point about Miller. His death is not mentioned anywhere. Very strange. Let me know if you still wish to Skype. As I said, my questions are going to be the same. So I've offered him, what is it, two times already, uh, video chat. So I reply, hello, Ethan. The claims of the other people you speak of are their claims, and they are accountable for them, as I am accountable for my public claims of language tutor and auditor. For me to attempt to answer these questions would just be speculation, assumption, and presumption. Yes, I use the one by 1.9 grammar flag. I use it for peaceful, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, contract closures, and personal vessel navigation flag protocol. But that's personal to me in my life. I'm telling him it's personal. What others do with it is their business. I teach correct sentence structure to those who are motivated and have the will to learn it so that they may first have a strong foundation in the mechanics before they go out and begin using it. On YouTube, I'm with the memory of you as Harry Nutsack claiming in your comments that no one in the quantum grammar community will talk to you and that if when they do, they get angry. It's my experience that the approach often dictates the type of reception one receives. I maintain my original offer of peaceful and brief conf confidential video chat. Okay, so this is the third time I've offered in this. I use Zoom for all of my video communications related to this construct. As you are with the Quest of the Connection, I will schedule a consultation and send you a link to our consultation location within 24 hours of scheduled time. How about this Tuesday, April 2nd at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time? Thank you for your email. So, I sent this out to him. Scheduled it. He asked for it. He, in the first email, he wanted a private, uh, to talk privately. And then he also said he wanted face-to-face -face video. Three times I offered him this, and now I scheduled it because I see that he's not about giving any closure about it yet, so I'm pushing it along to get closure. So I schedule it. And uh, 
the next email is my conveyance of the location. For this claim of the confidential consultation venue is with the location of this 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday, 2nd of April, 2019, with the venue of, and then the Zoom link, with the participation of the Ethan Cole on Cole, with this confidential conveyance by this consultation host, Jason Matthew Blacks. Click on the link at 12 Eastern Time, Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019, we'll conduct our brief consultation. Do not share the link. It is a confidential consultation between you and I only. Cite you then. So I sent that out April 2nd, 9.46 a.m. And uh, I will splice in a video of me attending that consultation and what happened within that consultation. As you can see, it is 12 p.m. April 2nd, 2019. A scheduled consultation with Ethan Cole. I am the only participant present. Uh, I had sent, he had asked for a consultation and I sent this with the link to the consultation, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019, which you see the date there. I sent this out uh, at 9.46 a.m. today because he did say he wanted to Skype face-to-face, -face, but I don't Skype, so I sent him the Zoom link for the consultation. And... As you can see, I am the only participant, 12 o'clock noon. If he does show up, of course this will be uh, void of the relevance, but for some reason, I don't think he will. And this person here, Ethan Cole, also goes by the name Harry Nutsack on YouTube. He's been very uh, adversarial and he leaves the same exact co copy and pasted comment on numerous YouTube videos. Sort of spam comments. He copy and pasted the same thing into emails, which I have. And he always talks about he wants to talk face to face and uh, but here I am and he's not here so there's the closure on that of course if he'd like to schedule another one at a more convenient time if he wasn't able to make this one for some reason I'm definitely open to it so, Ethan, if you'd like to reschedule, shoot me an email at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Thank you. For further closure, it is now 12.10 p.m. on April the 2nd, 2019. For the consultation of the Ethan Cole, I am still the only participant. I've waited 10 minutes, 11 minutes now, and... He has not, he has not shown up, so that's that. As you see, this um, notice was sent out on April 2nd at 9.46 a.m. The next email I get is over a week later on April 11th, where he says, I appreciate your replies. Sorry I did not get to this email sooner. I hear your words. I only have one question for you then. You use the flag on your ID card or whatever you call it. By what right do you fly that flag? Is that not the flag? Gould 
claims to have taken and registered worldwide. That is the claim that you support, but offer no evidence of its registration. Do you comprehend now? You are using a flag allegedly that Gould and Miller took in 99. You use that flag, you admit it. So what evidence do you have that provides the flag is recognized worldwide as Gould, Miller, and every quantum person claims? Every quantum person claims. I'm not sure how I can prove that. Ethan, from your email, which I sent on uh, April 11th right away, by the way. Ethan, from your email, you say that you have one question. By what right do you fly that flag? You also claim in your YouTube comments that no one in the quantum grammar community will have a one-to-one -one conversation with you. My offer of a one-to-one -one personal video consultation still stands. This is the fourth time I've offered this. I've even scheduled it. I would be happy to answer your personal question about me in a personal, honorable, and fair venue. I did say in a previous email that it is personal to me. That is why I want to be in a confidential venue when I give this closure to him because it's personal to me. I made that clear. So I want it to be in a personal, honorable, and fair venue. If you want full closure, let me know if you are willing to follow through with a video chat, which he wanted from the beginning. If you listen, or I mean, if you read the, the prior emails in this video, you will see that he says he wants face to face. If not, then my communications with you regarding this matter will end. If you'd like to learn about correct sentence structure, we can discuss this as well. Thank you for your time. He replies back on April 13th. It's obvious you are avoiding my question over and over. <laughs> Since you keep pushing to speak one-on-one, -on -one, which he wanted back in like his second email, he said that, as if that makes any difference. It makes a huge difference because when you speak face-to-face, eye-to-eye, it's a level playing field then. Okay, if you wish to Skype, sure. I, however, am not getting on camera. Now he's saying he's refusing to get on camera. He does not want to reveal who he is. Well, I don't know if he doesn't want to reveal who he is. I'm not going to assume that. He doesn't want to get on camera now. So he's reneging on the face-to-face -face thing that he first claimed. I will, however, speak to you on Skype or on the phone. However, I am going to ask you the same question. Let me know, time and day. And he sent that 254 on April 13th. So now on, wait a minute. Okay, so then I sent this out. Harry Nutsack, Ethan Cole, it's curious to me that you expect and even demand that I answer your question, yet you will not agree to meet me halfway in a fair and level field of communication. You know my correct name and what I look like. I am not hiding. I am welcoming you to participate in an honorable, confidential, and equal venue of communication. Your volition behind contacting me is very muddy. And that's my perception of it on this end. As you choose not to identify yourself for whatever reason you may have, and you choose not to meet me on a fair and level ground of communication, my offer stands. Anytime you wish to discuss your questions with honor and grace upon a confidential fair and level field of communication, Zoom video chat, contact me. I'll set it up. Thank you for your email. I wish you blessings upon your journey. What is this? The fifth time I've offered him a video chat which he wanted from the beginning, but now he doesn't want, as you saw in his last email. So now we're going on to, he writes back on the same day, April 13th. Okay, Jason, time and date, cam to cam, let's go. I'm going to do everything you want to get you to speak man to man, but it won't change the same questions we're gonna ask you. So he says that. And then, okay, so that was sent at 4.55. And then at 5.07, a few minutes later, on the same day, he says, Zoom will not allow me to make an account. See the attachment. So let's see the attachment. It says, sign up free. Ethan Cole at safemail.net. Sign up. By signing up, I agree to privacy policy. Sign up, it's free. Where on this attachment that he included and he told me to look at, where does it say that Zoom is not allowing him to create an account? It doesn't say that anywhere. This is just a login screen. So this is proof of nothing. Proof of nothing. Except a login screen. 
So let's go back to the top. Um, is there some reason you won't use Skype? Better yet, Jason, why don't we talk on the phone? Or is that not good enough? You keep refusing to communicate because you cannot see my face? No offense, bro. But just because you are foolish enough to post you face online does mean I have to. Does mean I have to. You are foolish enough to post your face online does mean I have to. So he's saying he has to post his face online because I'm foolish enough to. That makes no sense to me. So let me ask you. Okay, I'll let you. Go ahead. You won't communicate and answer my questions unless you see me? That sounds like a statement with a question mark at the end. Is that correct? Because if so, that proves your goal is not communication, but to get a picture of my face. Is that your goal? And I'm adding, you know, I'm adding inflections into my voice because I'm seeing the humor in this situation. Because I have enough emails right now to prove you're avoiding a one-on-one -on -one meeting. He has enough emails, which you've seen all of them, to prove I'm avoiding a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And so in my emails, I've, I've offered at least five times to have a video chat. One time I actually scheduled it and he did not show up. So this is his claim, which is a fraudulent claim, meeting and you are refusing so far. So he's saying I'm refusing. That's definitely not. That is with the avoidance of the facts right there. I won't comply to your unnecessary wishes, my unnecessary wishes, which were his wishes or unnecessary wishes by his claim now that he wanted a face-to-face -face meeting. And now he's saying it's unnecessary. Is there some reason you cannot speak on the phone? What exactly is your agenda? Is a phone conversation not sufficient? All right. And here is the final, or I mean the most recent communication. He says, Zoom will not allow me to make an account. See the attachment. And then I reply, all of my students and I, for the past six months, use Zoom. I use it for all of my consults. You're the first person that I know of who claims Zoom will not allow you to make an account. Your screenshot is a login screen. I'm not clear on the purpose of your showing it to me as it is evidence of nothing other than a login screen. He says, is there some reason you won't use Skype? I say, I prefer Zoom because it's more reliable from my experience. I have Skype, but haven't used it in months. I prefer Zoom. And then he says, better yet, Jason, why don't we talk on the phone or is that not, not good enough? You keep refusing to communicate because you cannot see my face. I said, to the contrary, we've been communicating quite frequently and not refusing to communicate. I am communicating right now. He says, no offense, bro, <laughs> but just because you're foolish enough to post you face online does mean I have to. I said, I have nothing to hide. I do not sneak or use fake names, but that's me. You call it foolish, I call it honorable. I am who I am for the world to see. He says, so let me ask you, you won't communicate and answer my questions unless you see me? Is that correct? Because if so, that proves your goal is not communication, but to get a picture of my face. That it your goal. That it your goal. I said, you contacted me. You posted comments on my YouTube channel and emailed me. You want something from me. You are making demands, and I'm telling you my terms and conditions. Honorable and graceful contact on a level field of communication, i.e., you know who I am, what I look like. I expect the same from you. Anything less is not honorable or graceful. This is not an internet venue of fiction where people hide behind computer screens and fake names and say what they want with no consequence. This is a venue of fact. This is serious to me. Not many people are willing to be open, honest, honorable, and humble enough to participate, so I understand your initial reluctance. So I'm leaving an open door for him. Again, he says, because I have enough emails right now to prove you're avoiding one-on-one -on -one meeting, you're refusing so far because I won't comply to your unnecessary wishes. I said, if it will help you, I am assembling a video chronology of your YouTube comments on my channel as well as all of our email correspondence. I may publish it as a video on my YouTube channel as well as on my other internet platforms unedited to show the continuity of the evidence. You may have a copy to use as you wish. This video will give public closure to this situation. It will be completed very soon. I have not made up my mind 100% about it, though. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter before I make my decision. And, of course, I'm referring to this video that you're watching right now. He says, is there some reason you cannot speak on the phone? What exactly is your agenda? is a phone conversation is not sufficient. 
And then I said, as stated above, I conduct my kuleana, my correspondence, with the honor and grace in the geometric level field of communication, i.e., eye to eye, face to face, via video. When you are prepared to meet me on that field, my offer stands. So this is like the sixth or seventh time I've offered him a video chat. I already scheduled you once. I'm willing to do it again if you're willing to be totally open and honest with your volition and motives. Thank you and blessings to you and your loved ones. And that's that. And that's the closure on this situation thus far with quote unquote Harry Nutsack and uh, Ethan, quote unquote Ethan Cole. I just feel like I, I wanted to make this video just to show some of the things, some of the things that uh, I have to deal with sometimes. And I don't mind it. It's actually, it's, I, it's a very good learning experience. The only thing he asked me about is my use of the flag, which is a grammar flag. And the closure to that is from my knowledge on David Wynn Miller's website, there's a flag, uh, there's a page on the flag, law of the flag and the constitution of the flag. And if he wanted to closure on that, <laughs> he'd just look it up himself. But he's looking for it in other venues. I don't have closure on that because I don't operate in those venues. It's, it's a psychological, uh, it's a psychological aspect. And I understand where it's coming from, but this is starting to get a little um, energy draining to me. So I created this video, put some energy into this video to put some closure on this. And I don't know if I'm going to publish it or not. I'll wait to see if he writes back to me, but I'm having it ready in case he does. So it provides closure on all of our communications. Thank you very much for watching and uh, peace and blessings to everyone. Thank you.